As you look back now, what was he doing that crossed boundaries? Well, he was telling me that at 16, it was legal to have sex with anybody at any age. And he had me convinced to do that. Having sex with him when, yes. when you were 16? Yes. How does an adult bring that up to a 14-year-old girl? He would just ask questions like openly, not really having a filter about anything. What kind of questions would he ask you? He asked if I'd ever experienced an orgasm and just had me convinced to have sex with him at 16. And was this an ongoing conversation? It happened for one night is all I can remember. Okay. How did he convince you that this was a thing to do? He kind of knew how kids worked and what their minds did and how to move your way around it. At the time, I thought it was okay. When he would then leave, did you three girls talk about this? We never really talked more in depth about it because we thought, oh, well, he's buying us alcohol, he's letting us have fun, he's letting us party. When you're 14, you don't think of it as somebody setting you up, you're thinking of it as, oh, fun, you know, like. Just a cool guy. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. With regard to this sex conversation, was he having this with the other two girls too? He had it with the other friend. He talked to her about it in your presence as well? Yes. Was she convinced? I think she was, because she was kind of like me, clueless and felt brainwashed, really. What you're talking about is what is referred to as grooming. This is what predators do. This is what sex molesters do. It's what pedophiles do. They groom their victims. They, you called it brainwashing. They get close to them. They program their thinking and make things seem no big deal, make it seem okay. It's a very premeditated manipulation that goes on with children and at 14 you, yes. you are a child and looking back is that what was going on absolutely. at the time with you absolutely and it sounds like during that time he was able to tear down some of the boundaries of privacy yes so when he got the three girls to relax those privacy boundaries how far did that go he never did touch us, but you could tell he was kind of pushing the level more and more. Did he get the three of you comfortable with walking around less dressed than you would be otherwise? Yes. Did he get you to walk around in bra and panties or what became the norm? Um, that was created at the time. When we were not drinking, we'd usually have all of our clothes on. But I remember the time that we were is when he'd try to make his move and come in and catch something or see something. Did he? He did. Where would he walk in? He would come into the bedroom. We never really just normally walked around with no clothes on, but he'd come in and try to catch something. When he did, what was his reaction? What, did he just stand there? Did he stay in the room? What, he kind what of looked like happy or aroused. A normal person would say, oh, I'm sorry for walking in on you. Did he come in when the three of you were naked? Yes. Would he stay there or would he leave? He'd stay for about a minute or so and then we'd shut the door. You now know that he may have been in there for a minute, but everything was on tape. Yes. It was all being recorded. But it was your understanding that your images were passed between Russell and Jarrett and that they went that far. Yes. And you don't know where else they went. Absolutely. Did he talk to you about Jarrett Fogel? Did he talk about his relationship um, with him? He did. He had said that he worked for Jared Fogle, and I actually got really excited. I was like, wow, well, you know him and you work with him. I kind of want to meet him. 
because it's exciting to meet a celebrity, but I never did meet Jared. I never did.